Well, uh, the Chiefs have been busy after making a video last night about them potentially franchise tagging Legeria Sneed. They made two moves today that deserves uh, just a quick reaction video, too, to kind of just update you guys and let everybody know what's going on. First, they released MVS, and then I just before going live saw that they officially franchise tagged Legeria Sneed. So we got to talk about those things and just process through it in a quick hitter video. But first, all right. Hope you guys are doing uh, fantastic on this. What is this Wednesday morning? I want to share with you guys a couple of things here. First, this was the no brainer move. If you would have said, Hey Cole, what are the top three things the chiefs or the first three things the chiefs are going to do in before free agency? It's, well, they're probably going to start conversations with Chris Jones and his camp to extend them, hopefully. They're probably going to do the same with Sneed and his camp, maybe tag Sneed. And then they're going to release Marquez Valdez-Scantling because his cap hit this year would have been about 14.5, 14.2 million. It was something like that. I'm going off the top of my head. But if you release him, you can save $12 million because his dead cap is only like $2 million. Okay, so yesterday, they've started talks with Chris Jones and his camp. They said they were probably going to be franchise tagging Sneed. And then this morning, they officially franchise tagged Sneed and released Marquez Valdez-Scantling. What's up, Casey? Got the dog here. There's nobody here. It's just me talking. Um, this is a no-brainer, guys. MVS had a season-low uh, career in the regular season. I'm talking career-low in out of any year that he, he was in the NFL, it was a low on catches, receptions, yards, touchdowns. Somebody here? Hey, I'm on a live stream. Oh, why? Uh, breaking news. Um, so yeah, career low in receptions, yards, touchdowns. This man was paid $11 million this year to uh, catch 20-ish passes for 300 yards and one touchdown. Now, MVS did his thing in the regular season, uh, or in the in the postseason, rather. He, he did his thing in the playoffs, made a couple catches in the divisional game. Um, he sealed the, the AFC Championship game, I believe it was, and caught, caught a couple, uh, caught a touchdown pass in the Super Bowl. Hats off to MBS. Props to MBS. He did his thing last AFC Championship game as well um, against the Bengals. You don't win that game without MBS. He's kind of like Frank Clark. He showed up in the, in the postseason, not necessarily doing his thing in the regular season at least this year no brainer move you move on from MVS you save 12 million dollars it frees up some cap space to allow the Chiefs to look for other receivers um and then to make some other moves the salary cap jumped 30 million then the Chiefs just saved 12 million by releasing MVS they needed the money anyway because they franchise tagged Lajarius Sneed shortly after and Sneed's cap hit it's going to be, yeah, it's a little over 19 million. I think it's 19.8 million, but Jordan Schultz just put this out. This is seven minutes ago. This is as breaking news as you can get. The Chiefs have placed the franchise tag on cornerback Legereus Sneed. It will cost a little over 19 million. So the priority is to extend Chris Jones for now, and they'll see what happens with Sneed after. So with Legereus Sneed, you know, that we talked about this in a video yesterday, but. I, this He got tagged a little faster than I thought, but they're going to tag him, kind of locks him in. He can then test the market, see what offers are out there. Sneed, can, Sneed and his agent can then see if uh, you know they want to sign with the Chiefs, who will have their own offer, or go sign elsewhere in free agency. I'm going to tell you this about Legereus Sneed, guys. He's beloved in KC. He wants to stay here, but at the same time, he's also won a couple rings, and he also wants to get paid a lot of money. Mina Kimes from ESPN said she has 20 of 32 NFL teams, their top need being cornerbacks, defensive backs, and uh, Snead is going to be highly sought after, in my opinion, in free agency. He's tagged, so a team would have to, um, you know, now trade for him and give up assets, which makes sense. The Chiefs can then acquire some assets. Well, what are you going to get out of Snead? Maybe a first and a fourth, a second and a fifth. I'm not sure. Uh, not a lot of cornerbacks have ga have gathered first round draft picks, and uh, so I'm not sure what Snead is going to get. But the Chiefs have some decisions to make. 
And if Snead wants to stay with the Chiefs, he's probably going to have to take a little bit less. I think there's going to be a team out there that pays, offers Snead rather, top of the market money, 20 plus million a year. That's what the top three corners in the NFL are making right now. 20 or more million per year, their average salary. So the Chiefs can then decide, um, or Snead and his camp can decide rather, if they want to, uh, if they want to sign with the Chiefs for less, 15 to 17 million a year, probably. I'm just ballparking it, guessing it's not going to be top of the market money that the Chiefs offer. Or he accepts an offer from another team if the Chiefs accept it as well, because they're going to have to give up some draft capital, whatever team wants Snead. They're going to have to trade for him and then extend him. So you got Chris Jones, you got Snead, and you got MVS. So long, MVS, man. Uh, I knew he was going to be gone. But he did his thing in the postseason. Appreciate it. He was a veteran. But, dude, $11 million to catch 20-ish passes for 300 yards and one touchdown in the regular season, it's not going to cut it. The Chiefs are going to refresh this wide receiver room. I know some of you are going to – somebody said in chat earlier, they said, well, what if they're not going to release Tony, but they're going to release MVS. Uh, we'll wait and see what they do with Tony. But the problem with Tony is he's his cap hit is $2.5 million. And his dead cap is $2.5 million. If you move on from Tony, you straight up lose $2.5 million. They might try to trade him. They could very well just keep him around because uh, he's on his rookie deal last year. They're not gonna, they're not going to uh, pick up his fifth-year option more than likely. Um, but MVS was the no-brainer move. It was a no-brainer move. It made complete sense. Tagging Sneed gives the Chiefs and Sneed time to hopefully work on a long-term deal or it's not that much time, guys, because if they do trade Snead, it's going to be before the draft because the Chiefs are going to take those assets, the draft capital, and then use that in the draft. Or maybe they could take some of those picks and trade for somebody else. I mean, you got left tackle is a need. Wide receiver room is a need. Uh, running back, you, Jarek McKinnon is a free agent. He's 31, 32. CEH is p quite possibly going to sign elsewhere in free agency. Uh, the tight end room is interesting. Blake Bell's probably gone. Noah Gray's on the last year of his deal. Um, and then on the defense, you got a lot going on there too. You've got Snead potentially not returning, but a lot of DBs they've drafted last year and over the last couple of years. Nick Jones, Chamari Connor, Nazi Johnson. You got Brian Cook. You have Jalen Watson, Joshua Williams. They also need to look at their linebacker room. Drew Tranquil, free agent. Willie Gay, free agent. Willie Gay's probably gone. I would love for them to try to bring Drew Tranquil in. The D-line is like, there's like two people. <laughs> there's not a lot of people under contract as far as defensive tackles go. And then they've got a couple under contract on the D-line that's like, well, I don't know. George Karloftis, yes, dog, he's staying. Charles Aminahue, I don't know. $11 million cap hit, and he's not going to play until midseason, if that, because of his ACL he just had repaired. So you can move on from him and save $7 million. Um, Chris Jones is still a question mark. Do they get a deal done with him? Turk Wharton, Derek Naughty, and um, uh, Turk Wharton, Naughty, and Dana. They're all free agents. So there's a lot of a lot of decisions that the Chiefs have to make. And, um yeah, I thought it was worth some breaking news, man, or a breaking news live stream just to process with you guys. I'm not going to stay too much longer, but that's kind of what is going on. The Chiefs franchise tag Sneed, and they released MVS. I mean, the the money they save by releasing MVS helps them uh, with the $19 million that they have to have for Sneed for now. Um, so we'll, we'll kind of see. We'll kind of see what ends up happening. Julia said the Chiefs are keeping Jones. What do you mean? Um, if Jones is demanding 30 plus million dollars a year, they might not be keeping Jones. There's a reason why they didn't get a deal done with him last year. Maybe the hearts have changed on Chris Jones and his agent side, but I don't know that the Chiefs are going to offer much more than they did last offseason. So the question is, does Chris Jones and his camp uh, take a deal similar to what the Chiefs offered him? The Chiefs might offer a little bit more, but it's just like they held they held out till week one. And they did a, a makeshift one-year contract to revisit. Chris Jones isn't getting any younger. I still think that Chris Jones is a priority, and they'll do whatever they can to keep him. But if Tyreek Hill's not safe, I mean, I don't know who's safe. It's, if you're looking at the ages, Tyreek Hill is 28, Chris Jones is 29. Um, I am pro, please extend and keep Chris Jones around. But to just say, oh, the Chiefs are 100% keeping Chris Jones, 
Uh, I can't say for a fact that they're keeping Chris Jones. Look at his agents, dude. Those guys are dumb dumbs. So good luck dealing with them. You know, I'd rather deal with uh, a brick wall and talk to talk to that. So we'll, we'll see. I'm hopeful and uh, somewhat confident that a deal gets done with Chris Jones. But to say they are 100% bringing back Chris Jones right now, uh, I, I'm not there. Chris Jones needs a new agent. Facts. You want Tyreek? Well, he's gone. Duncan said just pay Jones. They have money, no excuses. I mean, it would probably be somewhere around $30 million a year. But if Chris Jones is going to want way more than that, it's, it's going to be an argument over guarantees is what it is. Because he's 29, he'll be 30. And uh, they got to decide, you know, Chris Jones and his camp, they're going to fight for as much guaranteed money as possible. The Chiefs are going to probably want to do a, a dummy year at the end of that contract that they could get out of if needs be. Because the production of a defensive tackle does dip down after the age of 30. You can, you've got a long track record of seeing that. Chris Jones will probably have a great year this year. But I'm talking about what about the year after that and the year after that? And he wants guaranteed money for those years. You know, injuries increase and production dips after the age of 30. Yeah, MVS is gone, Travis. Keep Hardman. Uh, the Chiefs will the Chiefs will talk with Hardman. If they're not going to keep Kadarius Tony, and you can bring Hardman back on a cheaper one-year deal, I think you could. He could be your, your returner and your niche guy. Uh, that's fine with me, but that's not... That's not a big move. Like, they need to go get another vet, and they need to draft another one as well. But I am fine with that. Mike Pinnell is him. Yeah, man. Maybe they'll bring him back, too. He's going to wait, though. He won't bring, uh, they won't bring somebody like Mike Pinnell back right away. Or Jarek McKinnon. Ulfric said, I feel bad we disrespected and were very harsh to MVS during the regular season. Um, I mean, here's what I never did. I, don't, I never called him MVS. Not once. I think that's pretty rude um, and disrespectful. So I didn't do that. But I was critical of his underperformance, his drops, his miscues, and then him in the the presser, the post game presser when when one of the media members asked MBS about his struggles this season, and he's like, "What struggles? What do you mean? Like pretending that it's not there?" It's like, "Come on, dude!" And then like a week after he dropped the game winning catch against uh, was it the Eagles? Can't remember what game that was exactly, but um, I'm all about respecting players, but you can still be critical of their performance in a respectful way. So. No, I, I wish MVS the best. I don't know what's next for the guy. It would actually be hilarious if he signed back to the Chiefs on like a, a cheap deal, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think they're done. Uh, they want to move on. And um, it was it was a cool deal with him the first year. It was fine. Last year, he definitely struggled. Um, but I wish him the best. Who's going to replace MVS? I don't know, but they do need a guy that, that's... They need a speed guy because they used MVS a lot to stretch the field. So you need a guy that can that can move. Um, so you've got to get some replacement for MVS with speed. You could maybe find that in free agency. Maybe they draft a freaking insanely fast guy and use him to stretch the field because at times it's like, hey, man, you don't have to have it all together if you're a rookie, but you're fast as hell, so go run that way and take people with you. You know, um, it's not just that simple. There's a lot of complexities to the Chiefs offense. That's not what I'm saying. But you just need a fast guy to be able to stretch the field MBS had 20 catches for 300 yards and a touchdown last season. You can you can get more than that uh, from somebody. Yo, Lenny with the five months. Thank you, man. Red beard tier. Let's go. Let's get Eckler and bring back McKinnon. Yeah, I've seen Eckler tied to the Chiefs by many people just saying it's not like tied in like an official way, but many people's opinion saying, oh, the Chiefs should go get Eckler. I'm not opposed to it. He's not who he once was, but he is a dual threat back that could be productive in an Andy Reid system. I mean, for sure. They a nice little one-two combo with Pacheco, but you can't you can't give them a bag. You know what I mean? So there we are, guys. That's the update. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Um, I'll t answer a couple more questions, and then I'm going to get out of here, and I got a lot of other content to work on. But, dude, this early in the morning, I was like, I'm just going to do a live stream because I'm not going to take the time to prep another video and be a couple hours late on this news when I don't know that it deserved a full, a full video edit considering I just dropped one last night with about Sneed. What are your opinions on the uh, Jefferson trade talk? Well, I think the Vikings GM said he's never had a thought of moving on from Justin Jefferson at all. Could be smoke. I have no idea. Um, the trade rumors is a hypothetical that was put out by, I don't know if it was PFF or who who did it. Uh, I don't think it was PFF. Can't remember. I would love it. It was MVS 
who they already released and, and a first round pick and another draft pick for Justin Jefferson. <laughs> like, hey, count me in. But obviously that is unrealistic. The Vikings, if they trade Justin Jefferson, which they very well could for the right capital, they're going to need more than a late round first, which is what the Chiefs have, pick 32. They want to go get, if you're a Vikings, if you're the Vikings, you want to go get a quarterback. If you're not bringing back Kirk Cousins, you want a quarterback and you want to go get your guy early. And you need more than pick 32 in the first round to, to help with that. So Justin Jefferson is probably not happening. It's very, very unrealistic. He's also going to demand 32-ish million dollars a year with a contract extension. So we'll talk more options on on wide receivers and some of these other positions in free agency in an upcoming video. Um, they've got some money now with MVS gone. The cap is raised. They did tag Sneed, so that ties up some. They're in negotiations with Chris Jones, so it's not like, oh, we got money, let's just go do a bunch of stuff right now. You got to wait till the new league year for most of it. Um, you could restructure Mahomes. There's there's things that the Chiefs could do to free up even more cap space, and I'll be ever so curious to see what they end up doing. Anyway, thanks, guys, for hanging out. A little quick hitter news update. Hope you have a great day, and until next time, let's go. Let's freaking go. How about go, Chiefs?